Hey y'all, it's Bridget from Vincent Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement here with some more Godly Encouragement for you. Today we are talking about recompense, the recompense of God. God is a God of justice and recompense. He's the only one that has just measures. He doesn't just see what a person does. He sees a person's heart intent as well. That makes him the only one that is qualified to gauge what that recompense should be. If you're a born again believer, God's recompense can be something to look forward to. God promises to restore what the enemy has stolen. When we seek him in his kingdom first, it's not a matter of if so much as it's a matter of when that recompense will manifest we can be sure that it will manifest and that it will manifest in God's perfect timing. On the other hand, if you're a person that doesn't know Jesus as your savior yet, God's recompense will come to you as well. Unfortunately, it is not something to look forward to because unless a person is covered by the blood of Jesus, they are judged by the law the Ten Commandments, which we've all failed. None of us can keep the Ten Commandments. If you've ever told one little white lie, you didn't keep the Ten Commandments and you're guilty of all of them, unfortunately. None of us can keep it. There's not a single person that can keep the law. It was The law was meant to point us to Jesus, to our need for a Savior. Um, and those uh, they'll be judged by the law, the Ten Commandments, and their recompense will be weighed by their ability to uphold that law in which it's impossible for anyone to keep. God doesn't do that because he wants to punish anyone. Let me be clear. God does not do that because he wants to punish anyone. Um, God, uh, the Bible says that um, God wishes that everyone would receive salvation. He has to follow the rules because he cannot and will not violate his own law. The good news is, though, there's good news. If that's you, there's good news. Jesus laid down his life for all of our sins so that we could escape the recompense for them. We just have to receive him by faith as our Savior by confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in our heart that God raised him from the dead. That's it. That's it. That's all you got to do to be saved. It's so simple. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. It's faith in him that obtains our salvation. Obtain it, that it receives what has already been done. What an amazing God that has made that freedom available to all of us, especially when none of us, not a single one of us, deserve it. And he had every right to give us our just due as fallen people born into having a sinful nature. God's mercy is so great that he has blessed us with a recompense that we don't deserve when we follow him. God is a just God. He always repays. Always. Always. So we just have to make sure that we're doing, that, you know, we, we all think we're good people, right? We all think that we're a good person and that we aren't an evil person. But the truth of the matter is that we were all born into having a sinful nature. You don't have to teach a kid to be bad. You have to teach a kid and train a kid to be good. Now, if we were all good, it would be the opposite. But we're born into a sinful nature. What is that we're all born into a selfish, carnal, sinful, prideful nature? And... What is the first thing the little kid says? One of the first things a kid usually says is, No, I don't want to. Mine. 
Those are some of the first things that a kid says. And you have to train them to be gentle, to be nice, not to hit, to share their toys. You have to train them to be nice. You have to train them to be good. It is our default nature to be evil. And what we see as evil and what God sees as evil are two different things. Yes, of course, things that we see as evil like murder and pedophilia and, um, you know, hatred and all of that stuff are obviously evil. Um, these days, unfortunately, it's getting skewed in people's mind. People are saying, calling what is evil good and what is good evil. There is an absolute truth, and it's God's word. He decides what is good and what is evil. Now, Jesus said that if you even look at another person lustfully, you've committed adultery. If you've looked at another person other than your spouse in a lustful way, you've already committed adultery in your heart. You haven't done the act. You don't even have to play the act through in your head all the way, like by fantasy or anything. You lust after another person like, ooh, they fine. Then you've already committed adultery. Jesus said, if you slander your brother or sister, if you slander them, you've committed murder. That's pretty heavy. So God's ways are not our ways. His standards are not our standards. The standards of this world are Satan's standards. The things of this world belong to him because we gave the keys over to him to the earth. We gave the, author the, the dominion, I mean, yeah, we gave him reign of the earth. We reigned the earth. God put us in the earth. We messed up. We ate from the tree he said don't eat as humans. And he didn't tell us not to eat it because he was trying to keep anything from us. He didn't want us to eat it because he knew what would happen. We would know the difference between good and evil instead of just having good all the time. He didn't want evil for us. But at the same time, if he didn't put the tree there, we had no choice. We would just have to be good. We would have no choice for anything else. And that's not love. God is a God of recompense. Even though he had the right to say, and they didn't listen. Let me just start over. Uh, I, I don't like what they're doing. Let's just wipe the slate clean and, and start again. He didn't do that because he gave us free will. Instead, he built a salvation plan into the story, into his story, his story. Before the foundation, the Bible says, before the foundation of the earth, Jesus Christ was slain. Before the foundation of the earth was even laid, he was put in place as a redemption plan. God already knew in his foreknowledge that we were going to mess up. So he gave us a savior. God took his divinity off came born as a baby to a virgin was at our put himself in a vulnerable place a baby is the most vulnerable thing place you could you know, you know person you could be because you have to rely on other people to take care of you he allowed us to take care of him to, uh, mankind when I say us I mean mankind take care of him so he grew up and then he willingly laid his life down on a cross so that we could be redeemed back to him. We didn't get what we deserved. We have an out. But he chooses that way out and it's his right to do so. He doesn't have to give us a way out. His grace and mercy 
gave us a way out, and that's Jesus. And all we have to do is confess with our mouth that he's Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. We, have a, we serve a living God. He's seated on the throne. Right now, interceding for us, praying for us still, that we do not fail. That we are strengthened. That we have everything we need. And we have everything we need in him. And you'd be surprised at when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, after knowing him for a while, you continue to see more and more and more how everything fits together. He's the one piece that makes everything make sense. Now, if Jesus wasn't real, how would that be possible? How would it be possible if Jesus wasn't real, if, if Jesus wasn't the only way, the truth, and the life, if Jesus wasn't the only way to be saved, then how is it possible that he fits? He's the missing piece that fits for millions of people, billions of people. He's the missing piece that is fit perfectly. And how is it possible that when that happens, that people start living differently? They start being able to walk in who they were created to be. Who doesn't want a redemption plan? But the thing is, we don't want sacrifice. We don't want accountability. And we don't want to put our faith in something that we can't see. That you can see the evidence of him everywhere. Serving a God, a, a, an idol, a, a God like, you know, I used to have these little Buddha statues. I just thought they were statues. I didn't realize they were actually idols <laughs> till later. Like, I didn't understand that. That's the little God. You, They're meant to be worship. You know, you worship a little figurine. Can't do anything. I have tried many other ways to have a spiritual relationship with God. Jesus is the only way that I've ever found that actually worked. And it worked masterfully. Period. Like, there's no doubt that I'm a different person. And it's because of Jesus. And only because of him. Because he didn't give me my recompense, what I deserved. He gave me redemption. And then I get recompense that I don't deserve. I, I get... I get an inheritance, <clears throat> excuse me, in him. We all do. Peace, joy, love, contentment, healing, deliverance, provision, comfort. These are all things that we get in our inheritance. Restoration, the restoration of our relationships. The more Christ-like we are, the more it impacts everything around us. The more of him, more time we spend with him, the more of him that flows out of us into our lives. And then we get to help other people to see the beauty of him. And he is the most beautiful, oh, sorry. <clears throat> the most beautiful, wonderful, most amazing relationship that never fails you. He may not do what you want him to do in your timing, but he does what is right. He does what is good for you because sometimes what we want, we want something too soon and it would crush us. The responsibility and the um, everything would crush us if we got it too soon. It's his love, mercy, grace that keeps us and it's ours he just knows the right timing and his recompense is sure on both sides if you don't know Jesus as your savior I urge you right now he is drawing you there is not there are no mistakes 
You are not watching this by accident. I promise you. Nobody can come to God unless he's drawing them first. And he's talking to you. You felt him talking to you as I spoke. And it's not me speaking to you. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you through me, drawing you unto him. The only way to living life. Jesus is the life. We don't live until we have him. He is the missing piece. And I promise you, I promise you that if you give God as much time as you've given the world, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. If you want to receive Jesus as your savior today, say this prayer with me. Father, I see in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, that I will be saved. God, I believe that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that you raised him from the dead. God, come into my life and make sense of things. Make all of these pieces fit together when he comes into my life. I receive Jesus as my savior by faith. Thank you, God, for making me new and giving me a new chance at life. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. Faith in that. Faith is a confident trust in that. And it's our faith that obtains what has already been made available. Our scriptures for today are Joel 2.25 in the ESV. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. That was Joel 2.25. Jeremiah 25.14 in the ESV. For many nations and great kings shall make slaves even of them. Excuse me. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and the work of their hands. That's Jeremiah 25, 14. Isaiah 35, 4 in the ESV says, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. That's Isaiah 35, verse 4. Revelation 22, 12 in the ESV says, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay each one for what he has done. Revelation twenty two twelve. Um, all of my, all of the verses for today will be in the description box below. Jeremiah fifty one fifty six in the ESV says, "For a destroyer has come upon her, upon Babylon. Her warriors are taken; their bows are broken in pieces. For the Lord is a God of recompense; He will surely repay." Jeremiah fifty one fifty six. Isaiah 34, 8 in the ESV says, For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. That's Isaiah 34, 8. Isaiah 66, verse 6 in the ESV says, The sound of an uproar from the city, a sound from the temple, the sound of the Lord rendering recompense to his enemies. Isaiah 66, verse 6. Isaiah 40 verse 10 says in the ESV says, Behold, the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. That's Isaiah 40 um, verse 10. Isaiah 61 verse 8 in the ESV says, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That's Isaiah 61 verse 8. Deuteronomy 32 35 in the ESV says, Vengeance is mine and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and their doom comes swiftly. That's Deuteronomy 32, 35 in the ESV. Vengeance is mine and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip, for the day of their calamity is at hand and their doom comes swiftly. Now God's recompense is either a blessing or the worst thing that you can imagine happening if we don't know it, you know, 
the best thing if we know him and the worst thing if we don't, if we haven't uh, been born again and received Jesus as our Savior by faith. God never sends anybody to hell. I want to make it very clear. It's not God that sends people to hell. Hell was not even created for man. Hell was created for Satan and the other angels that fell with him when he rebelled and tried to be God, wanted to be God, and was um, prideful and fell. And he took a third of heaven's angels with him in his rebellion. It was created for them. However, Satan hates us because we were created in God's image. God created man in his own image, in his own likeness. Satan, and, and gave us dominion and authority in the earth. Mankind forfeited that dominion and authority for a time being to Satan because we were deceived by him and we believed the okie, fell for the okie doke and ate of the tree that God said do not eat of. Jesus is God's redemption plan that restores us to right relationship with God when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. That's it. That's it for salvation. That's all that's needed. When we do that, we have been restored back unto the guard, the, our position, our dominion and authority that we had before the fall of man. So, we are no longer weak. If you have Jesus as your Savior, you have the authority to use his name as if you're him. He's given us kind of like a power of attorney. I like to call it the power of authority. We get to speak his name and use his name as if we were him. We can, we have, he's given us the authority over all the power of the enemy. That means we have to bind Satan. We have to cast down those principalities and we have the power to bind and to loose. We need to use our mouths in order to do so. God's recompense is waiting, but he's also waiting for us to speak his word because the angels go forth on behalf to minister on behalf of his word. When they hear his word, they move. But it's his word, which is found in scripture, that they move when they hear. Recompense is already available. But will we do what is necessary in order to walk in that? And that is speak his word. Speak what's already been said, what's already been appropriated in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. That means pulling by faith, by speaking and believing and acting on what has already been done in God's word, said and done in God's word, we pull that into the earth, on earth as it is in heaven. That's what that means. We have to speak his word. We're not seeing victory because we're not speaking his word. We're speaking our words. And God is not, uh, not bound to bring our word to pass, but he is bound to bring his word to pass. He said, my word will not return unto me void. Thank you, God, for giving us what we didn't deserve in Jesus. If you haven't received him, he's talking to you right now. And we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised five minutes from now. The only time that we have is right this minute. You never know what's going to happen five minutes from now. If you haven't received him as Savior, now is your chance. I promise you, like I said, 
if you give God the same amount of time that you gave the world, you won't be disappointed. His ways are not our ways. He does things differently. But I promise you, you will be fulfilled, satisfied, and known. And you get to have an intimate relationship with the God who created us. That's pretty powerful. All right, y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye.